God bless you this beautiful Lord's Day Sunday morning. Good morning to all of you, my friends, radio listeners, parishioners that have tuned in to this another in a series of radio ministries that's heard each and every Lord's Day Sunday morning. A beautiful day it is to be alive, a beautiful day to be counted one among the children of God to have this privilege and opportunity of making it right with the Lord Jesus. I thank God for this another wonderful day. Have you stopped to pray? If not, to come on and I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Uh, wherever my voice is heard, even riding along in the automobiles this morning, I pray, dear God, that you will look upon those who've tuned in with thy favor and love and kindness and tender mercy. Heal the sick, O oh God. Answer request in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs you right now. And I pray for that person are those persons that need you, Lord, that you would touch them as we pray in Jesus' name. You said if I ask anything in your name, you would do it, and I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I want to invite you to come today and worship the Lord with us. This is uh, the last uh, Sunday in this month, and the women will be in charge today, and they're going to be doing a special on uh, pink, uh, for the Pink Ribbon Sunday, uh, who though are fighting for all of the women and those men who lost the fight to cancer, and uh, those who are suffering even now on beds of sickness. We're coming and we're going to be doing a specialty today. My wife is leading this fight and I'm going to ask you to come and join with us in a beautiful service on this morning at 11 a.m. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Here are some words that Jesus spoke. And he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to tell you to lay down your burdens. You don't have to carry them. Of course, we have to carry our own crosses, but we must remember that Jesus is there beside us to help us. If we're not rooted in God's word, however, we'll find ourselves going through life with baggage, unnecessary baggage and heaviness that is not meant for us. Have you ever seen the president or some other influential person carrying anything? Well, people who are important do not carry burdens. They have others to carry their burdens for them. Before the invention of modern farm equipment, some of the heavy farm work was done by oxen, by horses, or another strong, powerful animal. So the farmer would link the two animals together with a yoke, usually a wooden pole and a U-shaped piece that would go around the animal's neck and attach that to the pole. Then, as a group, they would till the soil and prepare it for planting. These animals became known as beasts, our burdens, for they were carrying the burden of the workload for the farmer. Uh -huh. Jesus here makes a clear distinction between what the religious leaders of his day required and what he offered them. You see, the religious leaders of the day, of that day, that is, the Pharisees and Sadducees, etc., had created so many man-made laws and 
rules and regulations about how to live on a day-by-day -day basis that the people were just overwhelmed. So that's why Jesus said in St. Luke 11 and 46, And you experts, he said in the law, woe to you because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry and you yourselves will not even lift a finger to help them. If we are not robbed in God's word, are rooted rather in God's word, that's right, if we are not rooted in God's word, we'll find ourselves going through life with baggage, unnecessary baggage and heaviness that is not meant for us. You look at Psalm 55 and 22, um, the Lord says in his word there, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. There's no promise of being released from any difficulties. That's right, the comfort comes in knowing who is concerned about us. God is concerned about his own. You should be letting God control your life and refuse to be weighed down by any burdens because they'll get you down, they'll disturb your peace, and they'll even distract your mind. We all know what happens physically and emotionally when anxiety is at its peak in our lives. It really takes over everything. That's right. It affects every human relationship you have. And it even keeps you from concentrating on the task that's ahead. It robs your sleep and creeps into your mind at all times. And it puts a stranglehold on your life. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, those of you who've tuned in to this radio broadcast, the spiritual outcome is worse. Your devotion to God declines. And you began to doubt his promises. You began to doubt his faithfulness and his love. Oh, God, help me, help us, dear God, that this doesn't happen to us because our burdens must be completely gotten rid of by a decisive act of committal and surrender. Oh, I tell you, they are given of surrender to God and cease to be carried by you. Sometimes we transfer part of our burdens on God and we keep part to ourselves, not fully trusting God that he can handle all of our burdens. And they must be completely given to him, my brothers and sisters, without hesitation and without reservation. If worry consumes you, there's an idea I'd like to give to you, and that is to invest your time in worthy or worthwhile activities. That's right, read the Word of God. There you will find comfort. There you will find a reassurance of God's presence and God's help. Spend time with God in prayer, pouring your concerns at the feet of Jesus and leaving them there. Spend time with others. Oh, I tell you, visiting the sick and volunteering to help the needy. And the added benefit will be an increase in your self-worth. As you see God using you to minister to others. There's a distinction between problems that we can solve uh -huh, and problems only God can solve. Don't expect God to do the thing that you need to do. That's right. On the other hand, don't try to handle things that only God can handle. You see, sometimes we get in God's way. We do things that we can't do. We fail when all we had to do was put it in the hands of God and trust him to do it. What should you do then when it seems that your life is falling apart? Lay down your burdens and pick up your destiny. Your past cannot defeat you. Your future is right before you. 
That's right. And your enemy is under your feet. Your burdens are no longer on your shoulders. Uh -huh. The kingdom of God is then breathing through you. The yoke and, and the scripture here that Jesus is talking about is a piece of wood that is strapped to the oxen to pull a very heavy load. The way that the yoke was made was uh, so that the stronger ox would carry the brunt of his load and the lighter ox would get the lighter part. So Jesus is saying that when we allow for him to come alongside of us and help us, he'll take the hard parts and we get the lighter parts. But in order for the load to be taken care of, we have to be attached to Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus' audience would have immediately understood what he was talking about because it perfectly fit their culture. But we have tractors today instead of oxen. Or oh, somebody ought to say, thank God for the tractors. Thank God for the machinery. Thank God for new technology. And it's in this scripture, Jesus is not demanding anything. He's just making an offer. How we respond to that offer, amen, is what matters the most. When you come to Jesus, you'll find rest for your soul. And you can rest from having to figure everything out for yourself. You can be free to give your doubts to God. You can have peace of mind. You can have rest in your quest by receiving God's revelation in his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, is there anybody out there worried about your needs being met? Well, let me give to you this. The same God who takes care of me, that's right, will supply all of your needs also. And he'll do that from his riches and glory, which have been given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, you ought to just say, thank God for Jesus. There's a plague at the base of the Statue of Liberty that's inscribed with a person that reads, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Well, hope and promise for those weary travelers, that's what the Statue of Liberty offered. But today I want to tell you about a greater hope and a greater promise for all those loaded down, praise God, even with greater, with these burdens, you're loaded down. Uh, you can say and, and rely on what Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, rest for the heavy laden. That's right. And let me tell you, the way to find rest is to lose your burden at the cross. Freedom, my brothers and sisters, is not found in discarding the yoke of Jesus. It is found in losing our own burden. Well, I want to invite you again to come to Holy Temple, Church of God in Christ, 572 Clinton Street today for our very special service with the women who are going to be uh, giving uh, their uh, little pieces today on what we can do to help those who are fighting the fight of cancer and even those we're going to be praying for all those who lost the fight to cancer and their families and I uh, want you to come and join with us in this very beautiful service. God bless you this morning and until this time next Sunday morning may the Lord bless you real good and I'll see you in church. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do.